All right, this is our first design unit, a unit we're calling design number one, and it's an introduction to product design. Specifically, I'm going to introduce you to something called the five factors of design. Now, you're going to see a number of slides here. I'm going to tell you which slides I would like you to copy into your jotter. At those points, you can pause the video and copy down the important points from the slide into your jotter. And those will form uh, the basis of your notes going through third year design and manufacture. I'll also ask you at various points to pause the video and do some activities again in your jotter. So what are the five factors of design? Well, I can tell you that they're super important to the course of design and manufacture. You see, every product can be described and discussed and understood uh, by using these five design factors. And we use these design factors to design better products, to analyse existing products, to test products, and to explain our own design ideas to other people. The five factors are function, performance, ergonomics, aesthetics, and market. And in this video, we're going to look at the first two, function and performance. These five factors of design form the bedrock upon which your later National 5 Design and Manufacture course is based, and indeed higher as well, so it's important that we understand what these are. So let's begin with function. I would like you to copy down these words into your jotter. You may pause the video here. The function of a product is what it does, what it can do. So the product's main purpose, its main job, is what we call its primary function. But sometimes products have other jobs to do. They have um, auxiliary uh, functions or secondary functions as we call them. So if a product's main job is called its primary function, then it has, if it has any other purpose, then we call that its secondary function. In most cases, we would all agree on what a product's main function is. But as you'll soon see, sometimes we don't agree on what its secondary function may be. For example, here are three uh, objects up here. Okay. So what would you say is the primary and secondary function of a skateboard? The primary function would be to carry a human around the place, right? So that somebody could stand on the board and travel along a pavement or something like that. But what's the secondary function? Is it to do stunts and tricks? Is it to be portable so that somebody can carry it? Uh, is it some other thing? I don't know. What about magnetic letters? What's their primary function? Well, their primary function is to stick to metal surfaces so that somebody can make a word out of them, right? But what's their secondary function? Is it perhaps to hold up little pieces of paper, little notes, things like that on the front of a fridge? We don't know, okay? So the secondary function can quite often be debated and argued. What about a microwave oven? If its primary function is to heat food and cook food, what's its secondary function? Could it be to defrost things? Or perhaps if it's a fancy oven with a grill in it, perhaps the, the answer is to grill stuff as well. Maybe that's its secondary function. So where a primary function is often quite clear, a secondary function can often be argued and debated and discussed. Here's an activity I want you to do. And once I've finished talking, you can pause the video and you can do this activity into your books. I want you to sketch the following objects. And I don't just mean like a little quick doodle, I mean a sketch to the highest quality. Because after all, as designers, we've got to communicate using drawings and sketches. And we have to be good at communicating. So, three objects, three drawings. Beside each sketch, I want you to write down in a full sentence what the primary and the secondary function is of each of those objects. What's the main job of a pencil and what's the secondary job of that pencil? Same goes for the Swiss Army knife and also the retractable dog lead. So, pause the video here, get sketching and get writing. Let's move on. So far we've looked at function, what a product can do. We have to now talk about the second design factor, which is performance. 
and an object's performance relates to how well it's been made. All right, but here's the crucial thing, okay? This is the thing I need you to copy down into your jotter, that a high performance product will perform its function well. So I've included a photograph here of a mountain bike. If its primary function is to get a human up and down rugged terrain, then a high performance mountain bike will do that really well. And that's what we mean about performance. So take a minute to copy those words into your jotter, including the heading and including that blue sentence as well. But what makes a high performance product? Well, we're going to look at four different things. We're going to look at its materials, its build quality, maintenance and safety regulations. And if an object, if a product does these four things really quite well, then we can say it's high performance and therefore that it will perform its function well. So materials. Try and keep that mountain bike in your minds when we talk about this. What is a product made from? Are the materials suitable? Are they strong enough? Are they going to rust? Are they going to tarnish? Will they take paint well? And all these things, okay? So, when we're making a high-performance product, we have to choose materials very carefully. Build quality is all about how well it's been put together, how tight it's been screwed together, how well it's been bolted, welded. You know, it's, if it's going to rattle itself apart, then it's not got a good build quality, and therefore it's not a good performance product. So build quality is all about how well the thing's been assembled. And after all, a high-performance mountain bike, as you come screaming down the mountain over rocks and stuff, you don't expect things to fall off of it. We're also going to think about maintenance as well. And that's all about how easy the product is to maintain and fix. How easy it is to lubricate things and oil things and repair and replace and fix stuff. A high-performance product is usually fairly easy to maintain. And finally, we're going to have to consider safety regulations as well. A high-performance product is quite often meets all the legal safety requirements uh, that it's meant to. So take a minute, please, and copy down those four uh, performance factors along with the, the words beside them, please. Let's move on. So I've got an activity for you here. All right, and it's all to do with this safety visor that we can see on the slide just now. What I want you to do is I want you to copy the picture of this person wearing the safety visor. And I want you to answer these questions in full sentences. Now again, this is a design course, so I want a drawn to the highest possible standard. Do your very best to copy that, sketch, that uh, photograph into your class notebooks. And then I want you to tell me four different things here. I want you to answer these questions. Question number one, what did the designer think about when choosing materials? Okay, so imagine the designer sitting down to design that safety visor. What sorts of things did they have to think about when choosing materials? Now notice that I'm not asking you to write down what materials it's made from. I'm asking you to think about what was in the designer's head when he or she was picking the materials for it to be used. Things like um, the designer would have to consider whether something was going to land on it, you know? That would be an example. So that's question one. Number two, what did the designer consider when thinking about its build quality? So this is a high performance safety visor. In no way is it going to fall apart when we're using it. In no way is it going to fall apart when something pings up and hits it in the visor. So how has the designer ensured that it's got good build quality? What were they thinking about when they were doing that? Number three, how has the designer ensured that maintenance and repair is easy to undertake. What makes something easy to maintain and repair? And I'll give you a clue here. It's all to do with how easy it is to uh, take apart and put back together again. It's about how easy things are to reach and to get to. Okay, so how has the designer ensured that maintenance repair is easy to undertake? What makes that visor easy to maintain? And number four, how has the designer ensured that the product meets safety regulations? What did the designer have to go and look up to read? What did they have to do to their design to make sure that it met safety regulations? 
So that's the activity, a really good drawing of the visor and your best answers on those four questions. You can pause the video now and get to it. And finally, at least in this function and performance section of the course, we've got a design exercise for you. This will take you some time because again I want it done to the highest possible standard. And your activity is, is called Find a Lost Car. Let me read this out for you. Some people cannot find their car in airport car parks. I'm one of those persons. You park a car in an airport car park, you fly away to another country for holiday, you come back a week or two later and you can't remember where the car has been parked. I know people that will lose their car in a shopping centre car parks as well. So I want you to design a product to help people with this problem. But here's the catch. It cannot be electric. I don't want anything with batteries, nothing that connects to apps, nothing that blinks, bleeps, flashes. It cannot be electric or electronic at all. You've got to think about something that's a little bit more mechanical, a little bit more simple. You must think carefully about function and performance. I want you to draw your ideas, plural, alright, let's not just stop at one idea. I want you to draw your ideas out and I want you to annotate your ideas. That means put little notes around them. I want you to describe your ideas and I want you to write notes about the product's function, what it can do, what it does and its performance. What it's made from, how it's put together, how you would fix it and if there's any safety regulations in there. You can look back at your notes if they're, if they're a help for you. When you're done, what I should see is I should see a whole series of drawings, okay, which I can understand, and I should see sentences all over the place explaining your ideas, function and performance. And like I said a minute ago, don't just stop at the first idea, see how many you can get going. Good luck with your designing.